हेलो मेडे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑल गेट ई एस सी एंड पी एस यू एग्जाम्स एस्परेंट्स टू बायूज एग्जाम प्रेप क्लासेस आम डॉक्टर मुनिंदर इरकुल्ला आम गोइंग टू टेक द क्लासेस हियर ऑन नेटवर्क थीरी कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड पावर सिस्टम द थ्री सब्जेक्ट्स आम गोइंग टू टेक एंड टूडे सेशन आम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ द ट्रांसिट एनालिसिस ऑफ द नेटवर्क थीरी you know the most important uh, topic in the network theory is of uh, transient analysis as are all of you and most of the people also feel difficult about this particular topic so i'm here to clarify all the doubts and i'm here to fix all your concepts here okay and i'm going to discuss different varieties of numericals so that you guys can enjoy this topic and can easily crack any question or easily solve any question that you come across in any exam i'm talking i'm i'm telling you here okay so therefore here students you just stay tuned for these classes from today that is 13th september to 18th september okay i'm going to spend enough time on discussing both concepts as well as the problems understand all of you okay well so before I proceed with the concepts before i start the topic here i'm just going to give a brief introduction about me that is i'm dr munindar irkulla i did my masters and phd both from nit warangal i have 22 years of experience in teaching and uh, my area of expertise is network theory control systems and power systems engineering i presented 13 research articles in most prestigious IEEE and the IEEE or IET international conferences held at Hong Kong, Malaysia, Korea, Singapore, okay, and USA. And I am supervising four PhD scholars on the most important and advanced topic called smart grid technology using artificial intelligence techniques. Okay, so I taught more than 250 batches in my career. for gate engineering services and psu exams both state government jobs and central government jobs okay and uh, i guided and motivated 2 lakh plus students from various engineering colleges by visiting engineering colleges gave my presentations and motivated several students towards gate exam preparation that is 500 plus engineering colleges i went across the india and motivated 2 lakh plus students okay so for getting more updates just click on uh, the byju exam prep youtube channel and uh, subscribe to it so that you will get uh, you know important updates whenever we are going to take some classes on most important topics because i'm going to take in future even network theory also okay in the network theory most important topics i'm going to discuss not only transient analysis but also some other topics i'm going to discuss apart from this even the other subjects like control systems engineering and power systems engineering i'm going to take some important topics like in power systems engineering i'm going to discuss stability analysis fault analysis load flow analysis most important and interesting topics and even in control systems also okay stability analysis frequency response analysis and uh, another important that is state space analysis i'm going to spend some time to discuss the concepts and simple techniques to crack okay any question that appears in gate or engineering service exam or psu exams whether it is state government psu exams or central government psu exams you understand all of you and my concepts are not only going to help you in solving the numericals but also okay when you uh, come across the interview when you face the interview it will be easy for you to answer the questions i'm going to keep in mind all these things and trying to provide you at one place the concepts and numericals the concepts to understand the numericals the concepts to face the interview in the future you understand all of you okay well so shall we start here the lecture so before we get into the actual concepts of the transient analysis in the exam point of view let's try to understand some important definitions okay we should understand first of all why we are actually trying to understand the transient analysis and where is it going to be useful that must be very clear for all of you got it all of you okay so let's see here the first one what is the first one here what is steady state and the second one is what what is transient state third one why transients occur 
most of us do not know why transients occur. You understood all of you, okay? Most of us know, do not know why transients occur. We should understand first of all why transients occur and then we'll try to find the remedy for them. And why transient analysis is required and why initial conditions, okay? And what are those initial conditions? How do you define the initial conditions, Nana? Got it? Okay. How you apply the differential equations to find the transient response and uh, how you apply the Laplace transformations to find the transient response or time response, okay, using the Laplace transformations. So this is how you are actually trying to understand here in this lecture. So please put your comments and doubts, anything that you, that you have, okay. I'm sure that I can definitely clarify your doubts. Hi Rajneesh, good evening Rajneesh, Mr. Ramesh, good evening, yes, good evening Ramesh, yeah, yes, yes, because of LNC components, transients occur, very good, very good, very good here Srivastava, Srivastan, Ranganathan, great, great, great response, okay, so let's try to understand first, initially, we just quickly, you know, pass through all these uh, things and then we get into the actual topics, okay? Because that's more interesting topics are there. So, well, what is the steady state? A system is said to be in steady state if it can produce a constant output response for a long time. Yes or no, all of you? A fan is rotating with 1000 RPM speed continuously. So, I can say the fan is in steady state. You are riding a bike on a highway road with some 80 kmph speed continuously for a long time. So your automobile is said to be in steady state. I am here for a long time as it is without any change in the displacement of my body then I am said to be in steady state. Yes or no of you because all these conditions are producing the constant output response okay for a longer time. Any system that produces a constant output response for a longer time definitely that system is said to be in steady state. You agree all of you? Okay well. But now suppose if that particular system got disturbed, okay, now you turn off the fan, let us say, from 1000 RPM, after some time it comes to zero. You apply certain amount of force on my body, I'll definitely move to another point. Yes or no? That means what? I move to another point, that means I just travel certain distance, if the amount of uh, force is applied on me, but do I really reach that another point in zero time, Nana? Is it possible? Definitely not. Because of the inertia offered by the body. The inertia offered by the body may not accept the sudden change in the displacement. Yes or no, all of you? Similarly, the fan, it is initially at rest, let us say, and you turn on the fan, that means, let us say, you disturb that steady state, okay, and it will reach 1000 RPM rated speed, let us say, but it won't reach the 1000 RPM in zero time. You agree, all of you? Because of the reason, the inertia. Yes or no, all of you? So therefore, you must understand the important thing is that initially the system is in steady state and you applied certain amount of disturbance, let us say, at t equal to zero, let us say, then obviously the steady state got disturbed. Steady state one or equilibrium state. Steady state or equilibrium state both are same. Nana. It got disturbed and it will enter into transient state because that response is changing with respect to time. For example, for example, the same fan you take or the same automobile you take, initially the automobile is at rest and then you turned on or ignition is started and then you started accelerating to reach that 80, uh, 80 kmph speed. Does it reach 80, 80 kmph in zero time? Nana? It is not possible. It will reach, you know, first 10 kmph, 30 kmph, 40 kmph, something like that. At different instances, different, you know, responses you are going to get. Similarly, the fan also rotating with zero first starts with then 10 rpm, 90 rpm, 100 rpm, something like that. And finally, it is going to reach 1000 rpm. At different instances, it's going to take certain amount of time to reach the 1000 rpm. At different instances, you are going to have different responses, different values. That means what? The response is changing with respect to time before it reaches to the next equilibrium state because the fan is starting from zero and finally it is reaching to the 1000 RPM. That means it is going to reach the equilibrium state. Yes or no? So therefore, another equilibrium state, steady state two. 
okay steady state 1 and steady state 2 or equilibrium state 2 no no equilibrium state 2 okay now what is happening before it reaches to the next equilibrium state the system is entering into the transient state so what is transient state in this in this particular state what is happening the response is changing with respect to time so any system okay any system is said to be in transient state okay if at all the response of that particular system is changing with respect to time i hope you understand the point okay well so now let's i think we understand clearly that what is steady state what is transient state so let's see the comments here yes please keep some comments whenever i'm asking the questions here okay well now let's see here why transients occur just now one of the students have commented that inductor and capacitors why actually the transients occur what are the main reason for getting the transients in the system you know any physical system is realized or designed by taking some physical components like inductor and capacitor in case of electrical system in case of mechanical system mass and spring elements in case of electromechanical system mass spring element inductor and capacitor all these elements are required to construct or to design or to realize a physical system yes or no all of you okay all these physical elements are compulsory got it all of you of course the resistor is also required damper element is also required that's a different story but i'm trying to highlight two important elements in the mechanical system that is mass and spring element because these two are the storage elements mass stores the energy in the kinetic form and spring spring stores the energy in the potential form similarly when it comes to the electrical system then inductor stores the energy in the magnetic field and capacitor stores the energy in its electric field so storage elements are compulsory to realize any physical system you cannot really avoid and because of the initial amount of energy stored because of initial amount of energy stored in all these storage elements the transients occur i hope you understand the point why the transients are occurring tell me all of you i told you already i'm here for a long time you applied certain amount of force my equilibrium state got disturbed i will enter into transient state i will definitely reach another equilibrium state because it's a stable system yes or no because it's a stable system when a finite amount of force is applied it will definitely reach to another equilibrium state because it's a stable system but before it reaches to the next equilibrium state the system is experiencing the transient state yes or no all of you okay it's all because of the inertia offered by the body and because of the initial amount of energy stored by this particular mass or body yes or no all of you so all storage elements because of the initial amount of energy stored in the storage elements the transients occur so therefore we we conclude immediately that without having these storage elements can you realize any physical system nana is it possible impossible yes or no therefore it is impossible to avoid the transients we cannot avoid the transients yes or no all of you we cannot avoid the transients but we can definitely control the transients the transients can't be avoided but can be controlled it's a very very interesting point to be observed you understood all of you okay without these elements you cannot realize any physical system and that's why you cannot avoid the transients but you can control the transients now here the word which is very important controlled the transients can be controlled right here the entire control system is coming to picture you understand all of you the entire control system is going to deal with what how to control the transients okay you are understanding why the system is stable it's stable and once the system is stable how to control the transients using some controllers or compensators but before proceeding with the controls and compensators design we have to understand the behavior of the system the time response analysis frequency response analysis controllability property and uh, you know the observability and all these things we are going to test and we are going to understand uh, before we suggest or control the transients using the uh, controllers as well as the compensators so i'll come i i don't want to get into that particular area because that is again a big topic okay so but you have to understand one important thing is that okay the transients can't be avoided but can be controlled and control the term please underline here 
the control system subject is important for us. Understand? So in networks, we are just going to understand the transient behavior of the system. And in control system, you are going to actually, you know, understand how to control those transients. You understand, okay? Well, now, why this transient analysis is required? Why the transient analysis is required? To make you understand, I'll take one real-time example. Okay? Look at this, all of you. Suppose, I think all of you are aware of the elevator, right? Elevator example, all of you are aware? I mean, you go to shopping malls, then if you if you want to go to a particular uh, uh, floor, let us say, then definitely you will you will catch an elevator, yes or no? Suppose the elevator is in zero floor. Okay? It is in zero, zero floor, and you want to really go to what? Fourth floor. Okay, your required shopping is in fourth floor. Then what will you do? You just get into the elevator and push the button. Okay, lift you call it, right? Elevator or lift or whatever you can call it. You push the button of that fourth floor. You understand all of you? Now, suppose if that elevator is taking the time, let us say, something like this. After two hours with the enormous delay, if it reaches to fourth floor, how do you feel, Nana? Okay, the elevator is taking too much time. I think you get bored in the elevator, yes or no? Is it really a desired response of the elevator? Definitely not. Enormous delay. It is nothing but what in our uh, control systems technology, probably I think all of you are aware of it. It is called overdamped response. Overdamped response. Okay, all of you can keep some important comments or any doubts if you have, you can just keep there. I will definitely answer those questions. Don't worry. Wherever you stuck, wherever you got the doubt, just, you know, keep posting the doubts in the comments, okay? Then I will definitely clarify it, okay? Otherwise, just let us have, you know, the session uh, as it is. Now, coming to this overdamped response, means it's a sluggish response, lazy response. Yes or no? Okay? Now, suppose if that elevator is, if that elevator is reaching to fourth and fifth floor, Okay, in between, and then coming back, third and fourth, fifth floor, coming back to what? Third and fourth, fifth floor, and then again entering into what? Fourth and fifth floor, okay, then again coming back, third and fourth, okay, it's something like this, and then finally it is reaching to the study state. Don't worry, you will definitely reach the fourth floor. But is it really a desired response? Something like a dancing, right? The response is dancing, okay? Fourth and fifth, then third and fourth, then fourth and fifth, just imagine. Just imagine you are in the elevator and the elevator is actually, you know, dancing and finally you are reaching the fourth floor. Don't worry about that. But is it really a desired response? Probably you, you are aware of it. This is called, uh, this is called what? This is called what, Nana? Underdamped response. Okay, this is called underdamped response. Yes or no? I think probably you like this particular response. The elevator, the elevator travel something like this with reasonable amount of delay and reaches to fourth floor okay and stay there itself exactly it reaches to the fourth floor this you call it what nana which kind of response it is which kind of response it is Sri Watson Rajneesh what kind of response it is critically damped response okay critically damped response you understand all of you? Overdamped response, underdamped response, critically damped response. Just imagine the elevator was initially at zero floor. It was for a long time. That means it was in steady state. And you entered and pushed the button. You disturbed the steady state or equilibrium state. It will slowly picking up the speed. That means it entered into the transient state. And finally, it is reaching to the fourth floor. That means another equilibrium state. It will stay there for a long time until another person enters into the elevator and push another button maybe 10th floor or 20th floor or whatever it might be. Yes or no, all of you? That means what? The equilibrium state of the elevator is changing constantly from one point to another point. Okay? Constantly from one point to another point. I hope you are following this. Right, all of you? Now the object of this transient analysis is what? We would like to do this transient analysis to understand this dynamic behavior of the system the dynamic behavior of the system after the system got subjected to any disturbance. After the system is subjected to any disturbance, before it reaches to the next equilibrium state, what is the behavior of the system? 
how it behaves. Okay, whether it is a over damped or under damped or critically damped, how the you know the variations are coming, how the dynamics of the system is changing. You understand all of you how the dynamics are changing. The dynamic behavior of the system is to be analyzed. Suppose if the dynamics of the system is of first kind, let us say that is over damped, then immediately, okay then immediately you have to call upon the control engineer and the control engineer is going to take some necessary action to correct it because the first response the over damped response that is a lazy response okay that is a sluggish response which is not definitely a desired response now he will come and fix it he will try to make it as what the desired response the desired response is obviously what the critically damped or nearer to that yes or no all of you okay Suppose if the response is of underdamped, then again you have to call the control engineer and he has to take some necessary steps. So what are those necessary steps and how they take, what is the design criteria, I am not getting into that. Just try to understand first, we want to understand the dynamic behavior of the system. After the system got subjected to any disturbance, okay, its equilibrium state got disturbed, entered into transient state, but we must know how long it will take and how the dynamics are also changing before it is reaching to the next equilibrium state, we would like to analyze using this transient behavior of the system, the, using this transient analysis, okay, of any given system. I hope you understand the point. Okay, well, so it's very clear, what is a steady state, what is a transient state, okay, why transients occur, and uh, why transient analysis is required. It is to understand the dynamic behavior of the system after the system is subjected to any disturbance okay well now coming to another important one why actually initial conditions are required just now we discussed that to understand the dynamic behavior of the system we would like to know okay we would like to know how the response is changing with respect to the time because dynamic behavior means what nana the response with respect to time how that response is changing with respect to time we would like to understand this. That means what? X of t. The same elevator if you take X of t. The vertical displacement of the elevator which is actually traveling from 0 floor to 4th floor. How actually it is going to the 4th floor? What is the behavior of it? How that X value is changing with respect to time? We would like to understand that. You got it? Okay. So X of t is required. But how do you get this X of t? How do you get this X of t? To analyze any system you require a set of equations. Yes or no? To analyze any system, you require a set of equations. If you are doing the steady state analysis, you require linear algebraic equations. But if you are doing any transient analysis, okay, you definitely require the linear differential equation. Why I am mentioning the linear? Because I am worrying about only linear system, not about the nonlinear system. So can't we do nonlinear analysis? Yes, we can do, but I am not getting into that. Because now, in our network analysis, Okay, we are restricted ourselves to only the linear circuits. So I'm worrying about only linear differential equations. So I need the differential equations pertaining to what? The system which I'm trying to analyze. Okay, on which I'm trying to apply the transient analysis. I'm trying to actually, you know, analyze a particular system, right? Transient analysis, I'm trying to do that. So for that, I require the linear differential equation pertaining to that particular system which I'm trying to analyze. So, for example, you have a differential equation pertaining to, let us say, that particular system d square x of t by dt square plus 3d x of t by dt plus 2x of t is equal to some 10, let us say. This is equation 1. You are following all of you? Then, how do you solve this differential equation? Ultimately, I want this x of t. To get this x of t, I have to solve this linear differential equation. Agree all of you? So how do you solve it? Look at this. d square plus 3d plus 2 of x of t is equal to 10. You have the solution, the complete solution. I think all of you know about it. The complementary function plus particular integral. Hope you remember this the general solution of any linear differential equation. The most generalized method probably you might have already studied in your mathematics class, right? Then how do you solve that differential equation? Tell me. It is using the complementary function plus particular integral. What is complementary function here? Let us see. What is complementary function? Okay. How do you get the complementary function? 
the complementary function you can get here okay look at this by finding the roots of this particular differential polynomial tell me d square plus 3d plus 2 is equal to 0 what do you get now d is equal to minus 1 like you can you can just you know calculate it d plus 1 and d plus 2 okay is equal to 0 d is equal to minus 1 comma minus 2 you agree there are two roots there are two roots tell me there are two roots means what how do you get the complementary function will become what nana k1 okay k1 e power minus t plus k2 e power minus 2t you got it okay then particular integral i would like to find how do you find the particular integral tell me here the particular integral can be determined here okay pi is equal to 1 by d square plus 3d plus 2 yes or no into 10 10 is nothing but e power 0 t if you substitute here 0 then what do you get 10 by 2 that is nothing but 5 that means you are getting here okay that means what you are getting the complete response as the complete response as x of t is equal to okay k1 e power minus t plus k2 e power minus 2t plus this is the complementary function and this is the particular integral look at this this is the complete response this is a complete response but still it is incomplete because of the presence of these arbitrary constants you understand all of it because of the presence of these arbitrary constants so how do you find these arbitrary constants there are two arbitrary constants okay you require two equations how do you get these two, two equations here by applying the initial conditions to this particular equation you call it equation 2 for this equation you need to apply the initial condition so the arbitrary constants if you want to determine the in the solution of the differential equation certainly okay you have to find the initial conditions if you do not know the initial conditions okay you cannot find the arbitrary constants and then you cannot find this complete response here you understand all of you okay so i think you understand the flow now okay I think you understand the flow now. To find the dynamics of or the dynamic behavior of any particular system after the system is subjected to any disturbance, you require a linear, uh, you require the response, right? I just uh, repeat it once again. You require a time response. For this time response to find, you require uh, the linear differential equation. You require what? The linear differential equation. When you solve this linear differential equation, okay, you have the arbitrary constants. Okay, to find this arbitrary constants, you require initial conditions. I hope you understand this. You require what? Initial condition. This is the flow. Got it all of you, okay? So generally in your mathematics class, the initial conditions are provided by the teacher itself. Teacher himself, that's it. He's going to provide you. He will give you the differential equation. He will give you the initial conditions like, you know, x of 0 or dx of 0 by dt. Hope you understand this. Okay. If it is third order differential equation, then three arbitrary constants, then you need three initial conditions. One is x of 0. The other is dx, dx of 0 by dt. The other is d square x of 0 by dt square. Yes or no? Something like this. Got it all of you? Okay. But in our class, the difference between the mathematics class and the network theory, what we are discussing here, the transient analysis on the electric circuits, here, okay, instead of providing these initial conditions, okay, the circuit is provided, okay, and the switching operation is provided where the disturbance is going to occur that you will understand, and finally you can calculate the initial conditions. And the differential equation can also be obtained here. How do you obtain this differential equation usually? Okay, any mechanical system, probably the Newton's law is going to help you. But in electric system, how do you get these equations? Using mesh analysis or node analysis. So, it's very clear to understand the dynamic behavior, you require a time response. What do you require? Time response. To get the time response, you require, okay, the solution of a linear differential equation pertaining to that particular system which you are trying to analyze. But how do you get that linear differential equation? You can apply KCL or KVL or the combination of these two somehow and get the linear differential equation in terms of the desired quantity. In terms of 
desired quantity. For example, you require I1, current flowing through a particular element I1, then get the entire differential equation in terms of I1. So use KCL or KVL or combination of these two, finally you get a differential equation, Anna. then solve it. But when you solve it, complementary function plus particular integral, you know that the complementary function part consists of the arbitrary constants, okay? You cannot get the complete solution unless you know the arbitrary constant values. For that, you require the initial conditions. Just see the flow. I hope you understand the flow, right? Well, now, what are those initial conditions? Let us try to understand. What are those initial conditions? How do you define the initial conditions, first of all? Initial conditions are those conditions which exist in the system immediately after the disturbance takes place. Okay, for example, at t equal to 0, the disturbance is taking place, let us say. This is the reference we are taking. Okay, this is the reference we are taking, let us say. Then immediately before the disturbance, you call it 0 minus conditions. Immediately after the disturbance, immediately after. Immediately after means almost 0 time only. Okay, in 0 time, just like 0 time, that's it. Right, at t equal to 0, the disturbance is occurring. Right? Here, hereafter we can use the switching operation because we create the disturbance in the electric circuits by means of switching operation. Okay? So immediately after the disturbance occurs, means immediately after the switching operation, that means T equal to 0 plus condition. What is that? 0 plus conditions. You understand all of you? Okay? So 0 plus conditions are called initial conditions in the electric circuits. You got it all of you? Okay? 0 plus conditions are called initial conditions in the system. Those conditions which exist in the system immediately after the disturbance takes place, okay, are called, okay, initial conditions. I hope, I hope, I hope you are all following. Just put the comments, whatever, uh, you know, the doubts you have. I'm ready to clarify here. Okay, good. Sudesh, good evening. Yeah, settling time, Srivastan to know the speed of the system. Very good, very good, Srivastan. Wonderful. Ab Abhiram, hi, Abhiram. So because of L and C components, and yes, very good, Srivastan, I, I already saw that. Very good, very good, very good. Now, let's see some more interesting things, okay? You just keep posting what are the comments that you get, okay? The doubts, particularly, okay? See, I'm a core academician. I try to discuss the academic aspects only here. I may not consider the chart box, you know, regularly, because if I focus on that, I will definitely... You know, I cannot give my best in the class, okay? But I will definitely see whenever I get a chance and try to answer your questions. And the end, uh, I'll give you some time, okay? Uh, four or five minutes. You just uh, ask any question that you come across. Or you put the question whenever you get into your mind, then I will answer at the end. Don't worry about that, okay? Well, now coming to here. Well, so what do you want actually here? You want to find the initial condition. That's the most important aspect in our class. In mathematics class, what happens? You have no that trouble. Actually, the, the mathematics teacher is going to give you the initial conditions. You're, you're lucky enough. Okay? I, I'm not that kind of person here. I'm going to give a circuit and asking and you guys to find the initial conditions here. I hope you understand my point. Okay? Well, now, well, what is the importance of the, the, the differential equation Laplace transformation? Probably you might have understood already. Okay? Differential equation, why you require? Definitely, you want to find a time response. Right? find the solution of the differential equation, then you get the response as a function of time. Sometimes, in some cases, particularly like impulse, excitation, okay, or some shifting functions as excitations, okay, then in such cases, certain places, particularly higher order circuits, okay, or even lower order circuits, you have first order circuits, second order circuits, right? Because highest order in our electric circuits, maximum you get is what? Second order only, not more than that, because uh, first order circuit is nothing but a RL circuit, Sec uh, uh, or else RC circuit. Second order circuit is nothing but what? At least one inductor or at least one capacitor must be there. Then you can call it as what? The second order circuit. Yes or no, all of you, okay? So here, certain higher order circuits, when you take or when you consider, or the circuits which are excited by okay, non-step inputs, certain cases you find some difficulty in applying, okay, in applying this differential equation methodology. In such case, the most important and alternative method to the differential equation is that apply the Laplace transformation and get the response in S domain initially, then apply the inverse Laplace transformation to it, and finally you are going to get what? The time response easily. 
You got the point all of you? Okay, well, so that is the importance of the application of differential equation. Now let us see. Just now I told you that at t equal to 0, the disturbance is occurring. That means the equilibrium state of the system got disturbed. I am here for a long time as it is in steady state. And at t equal to 0 means suddenly some disturbance has been taken place and I am moving to another point here. You understand all of you? I am moving to what? Another point. Got it all of you? Okay. So I told you already that I am not going to reach that another point in zero time because of the inertia. Initial amount of energy stored. That definitely there is some cert certain transients you, you know you are going to get. The system will enter into the transient state and finally it will reach the steady state because it is a stable system. You understand all of you? Of course, if you apply the infinite amount of force, I will definitely reach that another equilibrium point in zero time. If it is a finite force, I cannot reach another equilibrium point in zero time. But if it is an infinite force, definitely I may reach another equilibrium point in zero time. Yes or no, all of you? Okay, well. So now that T equal to zero, you are calling it as what? The time of disturbance, where the disturbance has occurred. T equal to zero minus is called what? Immediately before the disturbance taking place. Then T equal to minus infinity is nothing but the steady state before the disturbance takes place. You understand all of you? Okay. The system was already in steady state for a long time, right? And just before the disturbance also it was in steady state. Even if it is not there, we have to assume that it is in steady state. Then only this entire transient analysis is valid. Otherwise it is meaningless. Okay, whatever the transient analysis you are doing here, okay, every analysis has certain assumptions, yes or no? The most important assumption here that we are considering is the system was operating in steady state until the disturbance takes place. That means t equal to minus infinity conditions and t equal to zero minus conditions both are same. You understand all of you, okay? Then t equal to zero plus conditions, you are called what? Immediately after disturbance conditions or conditions which exist in the system immediately after the disturbance takes place. Also called initial conditions. What do you call them? Initial conditions. Now t equal to plus infinity the steady state after the disturbance taken place. I told you already that initially the system is in steady state. That means what t equal to minus infinity. Of course t equal to zero minus because the assumption is what? Until the disturbance takes place, the system was operating in steady state. That's a very, very important uh, assumption. That means pre-disturbance conditions, pre-disturbance condition, pre-disturbance conditions. The pre-disturbance conditions are always assumed to be in steady state. Nana. But that means what t equal to minus infinity conditions are same as t equal to zero minus. But t equal to zero plus conditions are not same as t equal to plus infinity because t equal to zero plus are initial conditions. t equal to plus infinity are the final conditions. Initial conditions are initial conditions. Final conditions are final conditions. There is no relation between these two. You understand all of you? Both are different conditions. Got it all of you, okay? I hope you are understanding this. This is very, very important. Now you are here, equilibrium state. Applied the disturbance here, it will enter into transient state and finally it reaches to another equilibrium state. Because it is a stable system, it will definitely reach another equilibrium state. So the most two important assumptions that you generally considered in the entire transient analysis here is, number one, number one, the given system is stable. Okay, don't do any transient analysis on the unstable system. There is no point in that. Okay, if you want to carry out the transient analysis on a particular system, first you have to check whether the system is stable or not. I hope you understand the importance of the stability topic in the control systems. Got it all of you? Okay. Without understanding whether the system is stable or not, what is the point in doing the analysis or putting the efforts in finding the time response or transient response? No use. So that is why the first most important step when you are trying to analyze a particular system or before you are trying to apply any controller or whatever you want to do in the control systems engineering, first you have to check whether the system is stable or not. If it is a system, if the system is stable, then you work further. Otherwise, first you try to make it stable. Got it? Okay. Well, so the system must be stable. The second one is what? The system is assumed to be operating in steady state until the disturbance takes place. I told you already that. Until the disturbance takes place. Until the disturbance takes place. That means t equal to zero minus conditions are same as minus infinity conditions. You got it, okay? t equal to zero minus conditions are same as what? Minus infinity conditions. So generally, exam point of view, let us now discuss. 
what happens in whether it is a gate exam or ESC exam, PSO exam. Remember, any exam, network theory is a network theory. Yes or no? Only the level of questions may change. You understand all of you? Sometimes lengthy questions might be asked in the ESC uh, mains examination. Prelims little easier as compared to the gate examination because in the gate generally the calculator usage is required. So the problems are designed based upon the calculator usage. That's it. But the concepts remain same. Okay, whether it's a PSU exam, state government exam or central government exam, doesn't matter. No, no. The network theory is network theory, that's it. Okay, some people think that, you know, I'm preparing for PSU, sir. I don't want a gate. No, not like that. Whether it's PSU or gate or ESC, try to solve all the questions as, as you come across, okay? As many questions as possible. Then you get the command on the subject. Now, coming to here. Generally, in the exam point of view, you may be asked to find, number one, P equal to zero minus conditions. Okay, what are the conditions in the system or what is the current flowing through a particular element uh, just before the switching operation? Just before switching operation means what, Nana? Just before disturbance. I'm using the switching operation to create the disturbance in the system. I'm opening the switch or closing the switch. Initially, it is closed, but I'm opening at t equal to zero. Or initially, it is open, I'm closing at t equal to zero. Anything it might be. Okay, I'm closing opening just to create some kind of disturbance in the system. I may throw out one element or I may add in one element, I may create one short circuit, I may open the circuit, anything may happen. But finally, the ultimate object is to create the disturbance by means of switching operation. You understand? Okay, well. So t equal to zero minus is what actually it is called just before the disturbance or just before the switching operation. t equal to minus infinity may be asked. Find current flowing through a particular capacitor at t equal to minus infinity. But both are same. Yes, sir, no, all of you. How to find, I'll tell you. Don't worry about that. Okay? For everything, we need to construct the equivalent circuit. T equal to 0 minus is asking, na? construct the corresponding T equal to 0 minus equivalent circuit. T equal to minus infinity is asking, then construct T equal to minus infinity equivalent circuit. But of course, I told you that T equal to 0 minus or T equal to minus infinity, both the conditions are same. We are assuming the system was operating in steady state until the disturbance takes place until t equal to 0, the system was operating in steady state. Okay. Now, the most important question frequently you get, 90% of the questions will be asked on 0 plus conditions only. Okay. That means what initial conditions is asking. The fourth important one is what t equal to, okay, plus infinity. t equal to what? Plus infinity. So, we need to construct the equivalent circuits for this, for this, for these two, of course, both are same. Yes or no? Let us see that. Now see this. What are the equivalent uh, circuits for different conditions? Now here, t equal to 0 minus or minus infinity. Nana. t equal to 0 minus or minus infinity. t equal to 0 minus means what? t equal to 0 minus means what? Okay? Or t equal to minus infinity means what? You know that, right? The system was operating in steady state. So what was that, that we are supposed to do or what is that we are supposed to do here? The resistor remain resistor. Yes or no, the equivalent circuit. Resistor remain resistor. The inductor is supposed to be replaced by the short circuit. I'm talking about the DC again. DC excitation. You understand all of you? DC excitation. Got it all of you? Okay. The inductor is replaced with the short circuit. The capacitor is replaced by what? The open circuit. T equal to zero minus means pre-disturbance condition, steady state before the disturbance takes place. That means before, okay, switching operation. Before switching operation. You understand all of you? Before switching operation. Got it? Now at t equal to plus infinity, that means what? After switching operation. After switching operation. Got it? Okay. Resistor remain resistor only again. Inductor behaves like what? Short circuit. Capacitor behaves like open circuit. That's it. Okay. Inductor behaves like short circuit. Capacitor behaves like open circuit. Okay. So, with an assumption that the circuit is excited by the DC. Constant DC. That's it. Got it all of you? Okay. Well. Now, how do you construct the T equal to 0 minus equivalent? You understood. How to construct T equal to minus infinity? Of course, both are same. You understood. How to construct t equal to plus infinity? Plus infinity and minus infinity, the equivalent circuits of uh, 
the equivalent of each and every element is same but the entire circuit is different because this is after switching operation whereas this one is what before switching operation yes or no okay now the most important part is that zero plus conditions okay zero minus minus infinity plus infinity straight forward you can find there is no ambiguity in that it is very easy to find in fact just replace Resistor remain resistor, inductor short circuit, capacitor open circuit. If it is minus infinity, before switching operation. If it is plus infinity, after switching operation. Just see the direction of the switch, whether it is opened or closed at t equals 0. Based on that, you can construct the equivalent circuit and find now what is the current flowing through the inductor. Current flowing through the short circuit is nothing but the inductor only. Because the inductor is behaving like a short circuit. Okay, physical inductor is there, but behaving like what? A short circuit. Physically, capacity is there, but behaving like what? Open circuit. You got the point, all of you? Okay, well, now, coming to now, the initial conditions, zero plus conditions we need to determine. For that, we need to understand some important uh, points to be observed here. Okay, now, let us take the resistive element. Because we have three elements. Three elements and six quantities. One is current and other voltage. Current and voltage of resistor, current and voltage of inductor, current and voltage of capacitor. So, totally six quantities are there. Three elements, two quantities for each element, totally six components or six quantities. Let us try to understand what is their behavior in each and every element. Okay, let us see now. Coming to now the resistor, I start my discussion with the resistive element. Tell me, with the resistive element, okay, I of T or IR of T is equal to VR of T by capital R. It's very clear, IR of T is equal to VR of T by capital R. Got it all of you, okay? Well, now from this we understand, if suppose VR of T is changing suddenly, because zero plus condition means what, Nana? Immediately after the disturbance takes place, okay? Before disturbance, there was some current, okay? IR of zero minus, there was some voltage, VR of zero minus, but immediately after the disturbance, what happens? If suppose that VR is changing suddenly, then IR will also change suddenly. Okay, in proportional to this VR of T, because R is constant, because both are directly proportional to each other. If IR of T is changing suddenly, then VR of T may also change suddenly, because R is constant. In proportional to the current, the voltage may change. So from this we understand, the current through the resistor and uh, voltage across the resistor may change, okay, may change instantaneously or abruptly, abruptly or simply suddenly or simply what? Suddenly. I hope you are following this. Instantaneously, abruptly or suddenly. You got it all of you? Okay. Well, then, so what does it mean then? At t equal to 0 minus, let us say, ir of 0 minus and uh, vr of 0 minus, at t equal to 0 minus, it means that, it means that ir of 0 plus may not be same as ir of 0 minus because of the reason current through the resistor and voltage across the resistor may change instantaneously. Or abruptly. Not equal because they are changing. Some current was flowing through the resistive element at t equal to 0 minus. Okay. The same current is not going to flow through the same resistor at t equal to 0 plus because current through the resistor may change instantaneously or voltage across the resistor may change instantaneously. So therefore and Vr of 0 plus is not equal to Vr of 0 minus. I hope you understand this. I hope you are following this, right? Current through the resistor and voltage across the resistor may change instantaneously. I am carefully using this word may change. I will come back to this later. Got it, okay? Why I am using that? Shall change, will change, does change. I am not using it. Okay? Of course, uh, just like that in a casual manner, you may use it, but it has its own meaning also. May change instantaneously. I am trying to use it. Okay? I will come back to that. Why I am using that may change instantaneously. Coming to now the inductor, we should understand the behavior of the inductor here very carefully. Okay, what is the behavior of the inductor? Okay, so inductor has its own characteristics. Inductor acts like a short circuit to the DC. 
Yes or no? Inductor may not accept the sudden change, the current flowing through it. Yes or no, all of you? So for that, we try to understand here. Look at this now. VL of T is equal to L into DIL of T by DT. You agree? Can I write something like this? L into, okay, IL2 minus IL1 by T2 minus T1. Okay, D, IL of T by DT, I can write, okay, in a simple manner that, okay, rate of change of current, IL2 minus IL1 by T2 minus T1. You agree, all of you? Okay, T2 minus T1. Then look at this. Suppose, suppose if this current is changing instantaneously, what happens? Okay, look at this. Suppose in zero time, T2 minus T1 is equal to zero. From this, we understand actually that the current through the inductor may not change instantaneously. Why? What is the reason? Because instantaneously means what? No, no. In zero time, suppose it was flowing like 2 amperes initially, then 3 amperes, okay? IL2 is 3 amperes, IL1 is 2 amperes. Instantaneously in zero time, the current through the inductor, if you want to change from 2 amperes to 3 amperes, okay, you definitely need this is going to become infinity. You definitely require infinite voltage to be applied across the inductor. I hope you understand the point. Got it all of you? Okay. That is why. Which is practically impossible, Nana. How can you apply infinite voltage in zero time across an inductor? It is nothing but ideal impulse. What do you call it? VL is infinite in zero time. Okay. Any signal of infinite magnitude in zero duration. What do you call it? You call it an ideal impulse. What do you call it? Ideal impulse. You can call it ideal impulse. The name itself is ideal impulse, which is practically impossible. So it means that current through the inductor may not change instantaneously provided voltage across the inductor is finite. Okay. The displacement of the body may not change instantaneously provided the force applied on the body is finite. The displacement of the body may change instantaneously if the applied force is going to be infinite. Do you understand all of you? Okay. Similarly, because this is a body offering the mass, which stores the energy in the kinetic form, here is an inductor which stores the energy in the magnetic field, definitely it has its own inertia. Yes or no, okay? So current through the inductor may not change instantaneously provided the voltage across. That is a force now. Provided the voltage across the inductor is finite. Current through the inductor may change instantaneously if voltage across the inductor is infinite, nothing but ideal impulse. So two important statements we are supposed to, you know, conclude here. And one more thing that voltage across the inductor may change instantaneously. The, the problem is with current, not with the inductor. I mean, the voltage, Nana. You understand all of you, okay? Therefore, I just conclude here that current through the inductor may not change instantaneously, may not change instantaneously, okay? But voltage across the inductor may change instantaneously may change instantaneously. This is provided what? Provided voltage across the inductor is what? Is finite. Okay. I am just assuming that VL of T is a finite value because generally practically speaking, the voltage across the inductor is a finite value, not an infinite value. It's not going to be an ideal impulse. It's not possible. The name itself is ideal impulse. That means practically not possible. Okay. Ideal condition means what? Practically not possible. So from this, we can understand that IL of 0 plus is equal to IL of 0 minus, okay, IL of 0 minus provided VL of T is finite. You understand, okay? Then this one is what? VL of 0 plus, because may change instantaneously. Then what happens? No, no. VL of 0 plus is not equal to VL of 0 minus. Okay? Note, Note, very important point, what is that? There are certain cases, ideal cases, again, we may work out, right? May not be equal. Current through the inductor may change instantaneously, okay? Provided 
VL of T is an ideal impulse. What is this? Ideal impulse. I hope you are following this. Ideal impulse. Okay? Very, very important conclusion, Nana. Okay? Now coming to the capacitor. Okay? How do you do that capacitor? How do you do that for capacitor now? Shall we do with the capacitor now? Look at this. Tell me now, similar way. IC of T is equal to C D V C of T by D T C into V C two minus V C one by T two minus T one. Yes or no? Okay. Then what does it mean, Nana? Voltage across the capacitor may not change instantaneously. It is not possible because in zero time you cannot change the voltage across the capacitor from some value. 2, uh, 2 volts, okay, not 2 amperes, it is 2 volts to some 5 volts. How can you change it? Okay, how can you change it? Unless you apply infinite current passing through the capacitor, it's not possible, which is practically impossible. As I just discussed in the case of inductor, okay, current through the inductor may not change instantaneously, but here, voltage across the capacitor may not change instantaneously. Okay, so we can understand from this that this is going to become infinity. It means that if you want to change voltage across the capacitor from one value to another value in zero time, then the amount of current that should be passed through the capacitor is supposed to be infinite. I hope you understand, which is nothing but ideal impulse, which is practically impossible. For that reason, we can conclude that, okay, we can conclude that voltage across the capacitor may not change instantaneously may not change instantaneously provided current through capacitance is finite provided current through capacitance is finite i hope you understand this right but current through capacitor may change instantaneously nana may change instantaneously got it okay that means Vc of 0 plus is equal to Vc of 0 minus, but Ic of 0 plus is not equal to Ic of 0 minus. Got it, okay? Note, note, what is that? What is that? Okay, Vc of 0 plus is also not equal to Vc of 0 minus, okay, if current through capacitor is ideal impulse if it is ideal impulse. If it is what, Nana? Ideal impulse. Okay? If it is ideal impulse, it is, it uh, the voltage across the capacitor may change instantaneously. I hope you understand the point. Okay? Well, so this is what very important to be observed. Okay? We have come to almost uh, end of the session here, right? Just uh, two minutes left over. I would like to just see, you know, if you have any doubts, just uh, keep posting the doubts. I will definitely clarify here. Okay. Yeah. Let me check. Any doubts? Well, I think no doubts has been asked here. But if you have anything later also you can post, I can reply to, okay, those doubts. Understand all of you, okay? So, well, now the conclusion is very simple. Okay. Current through resistor may change instantaneously, voltage across the resistor may change instantaneously, current through inductor may not change instantaneously, provided voltage across the inductor is finite, but current through inductor may also change instantaneously if the voltage across the inductor is infinite, nothing but ideal impulse. Okay? Voltage across capacitor may not change instantaneously, provided current through the capacitor is finite. Okay? But current through capacitor may change instantaneously, but note I told you that Voltage across the capacitor may also change instantaneously if current passing through the capacitor is infinite or nothing but ideal impulse. You understand all of you, okay? So based on this, we are going to discuss how to find zero plus conditions, okay? From tomorrow onwards, I'm going to do some good number of problems in the next upcoming session, okay? So keep watching all these, you know, from the beginning to the end, okay? And give your doubts also. You can post the doubts in the comment box then I just definitely give you the, you know, the answer to them. And I'm also sharing my contact details here. If you have any doubts, you can also share to my WhatsApp or else uh, Telegram, okay? 
through Telegram channel or else WhatsApp, you can just keep posting your doubts to this number. Okay, I will definitely answer them. Any doubts that you come across, whether it's a network theory or control systems or power system, whatever it might be. Got it, okay? So, see you for the day and uh, this is what uh, we're going to wind up here and uh, that's all for the day. Yeah. 9866 sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay? 9866-546-088. Got it all of you, okay? Well, this is what my email ID I'm just sharing with you. If you have any doubts, any queries, please keep posting them. I can definitely answer your doubts. So, I'm just going to wind up this and uh, wish you good luck all of you. Let's meet tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.